Hello friends, this video on microorganisms friend and foe part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So the question is, for these microorganisms, do they attack all the food items? Well, not really. So microbes just doesn't attack any food item. So these microorganisms also need suitable conditions to grow. So they just can't grow anywhere and everywhere. So what do we mean by suitable environments? When you say suitable environment for microorganisms, mostly they prefer water, that is places where they have moisture. Other thing that they mostly need is a warm temperature. So warm temperature and moisture are the two things which favors the growth of most of the microorganisms. So if we provide such suitable environment, then there are probabilities that these organisms will grow. So only then and only when they grow, they will be able to release toxic substance and spoil the food. So we need to ensure that the favorable conditions are not provided to the microbes to grow. So if the microbes can't grow, then the food will also not get poisoned. And there comes the techniques to preserve food. So now, these microbes, if they ask you, do you want us to grow on your food? So do we really want our food to turn into poison? No, of course not. So what should we do? We should ensure that the food is always stored at a temperature which is not very warm. So that is why we use refrigerators. So the cooked food are kept inside the refrigerator. So where the temperature is so low that it doesn't favor the growth of microbes. So that is one thing. We also ensure that whenever we prepare a food which has water in it. So that food doesn't last for a long time. So if we want that to last, either we have to store it in the refrigerator or you have to prepare the food completely fried. So try to use minimum water or no water at all. That is why you would have seen that the fried vegetables, for example, if you fry vegetables and store it outside, and if you prepare another dish which has water and store it outside, the one which is fried will stay good for a longer time. And the one which has moisture will get, will get spoiled quickly. So now, since we do not want microorganisms to grow on our food, so there comes the techniques of food preservation. So there comes the concept of food preservation. So let us see what are the various techniques that we can follow to preserve our food, to ensure that microorganisms do not grow on our food. Some of the techniques are by using chemicals. Chemicals, in terms of chemicals, we use all these chemicals like common salt, which is sodium chloride, sugar, oil and vinegar. Vinegar is nothing but acetic acid. So all these chemicals can help to preserve food. So if you put all these chemicals in food items, they will not get attacked by microorganisms. Proper storage. So you just should not leave the food items open. So they should be stored in proper containers and that, that is another way they can be preserved for a long time. Heat and cold treatment. So heating the food or cooling it down. So that also helps in preserving it. So now we will talk about each of these techniques in little more detail. So the first thing we will talk about is preservation by chemicals. So these chemicals, they prevent the attack and growth of microbes. So first of all, they repel the microbes. They do not allow the microbes to come and sit on the food. That is one thing. Even if they come, they do not allow them to grow. So microbes in the sense, bacteria, fungi, which cause diseases. So some of the chemicals are sodium benzoate. So sodium benzoate is used in several fruit juices you would have seen the canned fruit juices or the fruit juices available in packets so how are they stored for a longer period of time for example when you buy an apple juice which is uh, packed so do you think that they prepared it that time itself no it, it was prepared maybe a few days back and it is going to last for another couple of days or couple of months as well so how it lasts for such a long time that's because it contains preservatives now, whereas if you prepare a fresh fruit juice, do you think that it is going to last for a month? Until and unless you add preservative to it, it is not going to last that long. So fruit juices, jams, jellies, syrups, all these things stay for a longer period because they have preservatives in the form of sodium benzoate. 
Sodium metasulfite is another chemical which act as a preservative. It is seen in dried fruits or vegetables, syrups, fruit juices again. So these days you often find fruits and vegetables, they are dried and packed. So they will stay for a longer period of time. In fact, if you see some of the vegetables like peas, you will see these days not only the fresh peas are available in the market, even the dried and uh, refrigerated peas are also available. So you get them in packets and, you, and they are available throughout the year. Preservation by chemicals, let us see salt and vinegar. Vinegar is nothing but acetic acid. So how it helps? It helps in pickles, sauces, ketchup. So you see all these things, they last for a couple of months. In fact, some of them even last for years. So this is because of the presence of these various chemical preservatives. Next is sodium chloride, like for uh, preserving meat, fish, amla, raw mango, you can use sodium chloride. So if you want, you can try it out at your home. I mean, if you want to store fishes, what you can do is you just wash the fish and dry it properly and then you add some salt to it and you keep it. You will see that it doesn't get spoiled for quite some time. That's because salt doesn't allow the microorganisms to grow. And that's how it is saved and it is not spoiled. Oils. Now again, oils also do not allow bacteria to survive. That's because the pH of the oil is such that it is not suitable for bacteria survival. So fried foods, pickles, they have, they contain a lot of oil and this oil also acts as a preservative. As I was telling you just now, that if you prepare a food item which is completely fried, so it stays for a longer time. Even if you don't refrigerate it, it stays good for a longer time. But if you compare it with something which has water, which has less oil, it doesn't last that long. Sugar. Sugar is another important preservative which is seen in jam, jelly, squash. So all of these contain a lot of sugar and sugar also helps to preserve it for a longer time. How? Because sugar tends to reduce the moisture content. So it reduces moisture. More amount of moisture means more chances of getting spoiled because more moisture favors the growth of more bacteria. So if the moisture content is reduced, then the growth of microorganisms is also inhibited and that is it is saved from getting spoiled. Now the next thing that can be done to preserve a food item is proper storage. Now we need to ensure that proper containers are used for storage of food items. Sealed airtight containers should be used because if airtight, if these are airtight containers, then basically what happens is it is not that air keeps getting inside the container because again lot of air also supports the growth of microbes because microbes needs air for aerobic respiration so presence of too much of air will also promote the growth of microbes and we do not want to grow microbes so they should be sealed airtight containers sealed packets so even if they are stored in packets for example milk and many other items many other eatables are stored in packets but those packets are also properly sealed so that they are like airtight. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.